Joe Biden has announced that he is running for president. And I think that in fairness to uh, Vice President Biden, and uh, to use his own words, I think it's a big effing deal, which is almost his words. But, um, and I think there's much to like about Joe Biden. I think there is much to disagree with about Joe Biden on the policy side, but his uh, announcement to me is enough of a big effing deal that I'm gonna give it the attention it deserves, starting with his announcement video, uh, which we're gonna play, and uh, with some interruptions, I'm gonna stop it here and there to comment on what I think this video tells us about uh, the vice president's uh, potential direction going forward. So let us, without any further ado, um, play Joe of Biden's uh, announcement. I will stop talking now. Let's play his video. Charlottesville, Virginia is home to the author of one of the great documents in human history. We know it by heart. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. We've heard it so often, it's almost a cliche, but it's who we are. We haven't always lived up to these ideals. Jefferson himself didn't, but we have never before walked away from them. Charlottesville is also home to a defining moment for this okay, nation I'm in the last few years. I'm, I'm actually going to stop it for the first time here to say uh, we have actually walked away from those ideals. We've walked away from them many times, unfortunately. We walked away from them when fire hoses were turned on civil rights demonstrators. We walked away from them when Japanese Americans were interned against their will. We walked away from them when uh, President Bush uh, li the second lied our way into a war. I could go on and on. We, we violated them when we violated the civil liberties of m millions of Americans by spying on them and so on. I, but I get, sure, I get what Joe Biden's trying to do here. In complete fairness, he's trying to evoke our higher ideals and our higher sense of self. But I do have to say, in all fairness to history, we did violate those ideals. Still, you know, this, at least for Joe Biden's generation of politicians, this is standard fare. You evoke the Id highest ideals of the country. I get that what he's trying to do, and now he's about to allude to a moment in recent history, so let's keep going. It was there on August of 2017, we saw Klansmen and white supremacists and neo-Nazis come out in the open. Their crazed faces, illuminated by torches, veins bulging, and burying the fangs of racism, chanting the same anti-Semitic bile heard across Europe in the 30s. Okay, let me stop for a second here. First of all, of course, I don't think anybody listening to my voice would disagree with Biden that these were horrific people doing horrific things. I certainly wouldn't, and I certainly, for many reasons, some of them personal, uh, share his horror at anti-Semitism. So I can't argue there. I do have to say, just as a speech writer, former speechwriter and writer, this business about the veins bulging and the bearing of the fangs is not only overwriting, I would recommend to the vice president that he revisit uh, the writing style there. And I'm not saying that to be picky and I'm saying that, but because over the top expressions are not only less effective as political communication, uh, but they are also a way of taking people who are horrible enough to begin with and granting them an almost supernatural dimension of horror that they have. First, it, dehumanizing your enemy is what they do. It's not what we do. They don't literally have fangs that can be bared. And so they weren't literally, well, in some cases they were bulging their veins actually, but as a rule, they were not. So the sheer horror of fascism in this country and of the upsurge of new fashion fascism in this country isn't that it's inhuman, it's that it is all too human. So I would have not a big diss on the vice president here. I'm glad he's speaking out against fascism, but I would have made the rhetoric more appropriate to the gravity and the solemnity of the fact that we have to fight this threat the way we do at this moment in history. But let's keep going. 
And they were met by a courageous group of Americans. And a violent clash ensued. And a brave young woman lost her life. And that's when we heard the words of the President of the United States that stunned the world and shocked the conscience of this nation. He said there were, quote, some very fine people on both sides. Very fine people on both sides? With those words, the President of the United States assigned a moral equivalence between those spreading hate and those with the courage to stand against it. And I'll stop and again moment, here just to I say, the threat to this nation and I'll say, he's on. still talking, you're still talking, Joe. Uh, I will say at this moment, excellent, very good. I mean, I think it's great that he is taking the fight directly to Donald Trump. I get, you get what he's doing here, right? He's doing a couple things. One, he's, he's telling you he's going to take the fight directly to Donald Trump from the be beginning. That's what Bernie is doing too, by the way. And it's a smart strategy for both men because people are anxious to have a Democratic candidate that will take this guy on and take him on directly. And uh, I like the directness with which Joe Biden is doing this. I like, uh, this is the same Joe Biden. That, everybody was horrified, by the way, when Biden said that he would uh, take Trump out um, behind the bar or whatever he said and kick his butt, or I can't remember the exact words, but I, you know, I kind of like that too. I mean, I'm a working class guy by background. I, uh, I get that. Okay, anyway, let's keep going. That moment, I knew the threat to this nation was unlike any I had ever seen in my lifetime. I wrote at the time that we're in the battle for the soul of this nation. Oh, well, that's even more true today. We are in the battle for the soul of this nation. Now, let I me believe stop. history will look back. Let me stop again. Uh, if you're really into listening to Joe Biden uninterrupted, I know you're getting really frustrated right now, but sorry about that. It's online. Um, this is where Joe goes astray after, in my opinion, after one of the places where he goes really astray, uh, after being so strong in his taking the fight to the Donald. This is not, Joe Biden is 76 years old. I assure you, this is not the first time in his lifetime that this nation has gone seriously astray. I've already listed some examples of other times we've gone seriously astray in Joe Biden's lifetime. So, and here's the danger with that kind of rhetoric. And I'll get to this further because I think he compounds the problem. But when you make it seem as if Donald Trump is uniquely evil, that he is no one like him, no conservative like him, no Republican like him, no one else like him has ever threatened this country, that only Donald Trump, veins bulging and fangs bared, represents a threat to our democracy, you ignore the systemic threats, you ignore the political threats, you ignore the economic threats, you would ignore the threat of structural racism, structural discrimination, deep-seated anti-Semitism, and the horrors of misogyny that play themselves out on every level in American life each and every day. But let's continue. On four years of this president, and all he embraces as an aberrant moment in time, but if we give Donald Trump eight years in the White House, he will forever and fundamentally alter the character of this nation, who we are. And I cannot stand by and watch that happen. The core values of this nation are standing in the world, our very democracy. Everything that has made America, America is at stake. That's why today I'm announcing my candidacy for president of the United States. Folks, America is an idea, an idea that's stronger than any army, bigger than any ocean, more powerful than any dictator or tyrant. It gives hope to the most desperate people on earth. It guarantees that everyone is treated with dignity and gives hate no safe harbor. It instills in every person in this country the belief that no matter where you start in life, there's nothing you can achieve if you work at it. That's what we believe. And above all else, that's what's at stake in this election. We can't forget what happened in Charlottesville. Even more important, we have to remember who we are. This is America. Okay, so that's Joe Biden's, uh, that's Joe Biden's video. Again, 
I offer some criticisms. Uh, America is not just an idea. America is a concrete reality that imposes itself for good or ill on billions of people around the world every day. America is not an idea to people who have received life-saving aid from the United States. It's not an idea for uh, an abstract idea for people who have been on the wrong end of a drone from the country either. No country is just an idea. Of course, America has ideas. Uh, America proclaims ideas. Americans believe uh, they have cohered around an idea. Look, y you get uh, you get the idea here. Uh, I have serious criticisms of Joe Biden's video, but from my political slash professional um, perspective, with that hat on, I also think it's a really effective video in a lot of ways. I disagree with a lot of it, but it could work. Uh, so I, I'm not knocking old Joe out by any. Uh, by any definition of the terms, I think he has a good uh, chance of riding this to a successful outcome. I think right now, is, according to the polls, his biggest threat is Bernie, but um, helped by the fact that if the progressive vote is split among multiple candidates, uh, Joe Biden could definitely pull this thing off. But there's something else you didn't hear in that video either, and it concerned me, and that's other than you, you really didn't hear anything about economics. You didn't hear anything about people who are working two jobs and can't make ends meet. You didn't hear anything. Remember, it was Joe Biden who challenged uh, Bernie Sanders saying you can't blame everything on what 500 uh, billionaires have done, when in fact you can blame a lot of our troubles on the inequality of wealth that produced a, a couple hundred billionaires. Uh, you didn't, um, you didn't hear anything about people struggling to make ends meet. I'm sure he'll get to it in one way or another, but it confirms some of my biggest concern. I shouldn't say it confirms. It, 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 it inflames some of my biggest concerns about what a Joe Biden candidacy might be and is likely to be given his political history, which is an attempt to rouse us with uh, ideals without specifics. So could it work? Yeah, I guess it could work. But what, let's play out the scenario. What happens if a Democratic nominee, and maybe it's not Joe Biden, maybe it's Pete Buttigieg, who appears to be doing the same thing, or Beto O'Rourke, who appears to be doing the same thing. What happens if the Democratic nominee for president is a white male of any age who uh, is very vague on policy specifics, goes for the inspirational rhetoric, and doesn't tell the country what he's going to do to help them make ends meet, uh, pretends that Joe Bi that uh, Donald Trump is uniquely evil and that all the other Republicans are fine, which is a big part of the Joe Biden MO. He, he spoke kindly about a Republican member of Congress uh, just before an election, which was decided by only a few hundred votes, as I recall. Many people felt he his failure to step in and endorse the Democrat helped the Republican get reelected, and then he was sarcastic about it and snapped at people, forgive me, Father, for I am sin because I sometimes like Republicans. So if we got a, a, a Democratic candidate, Beto O'Rourke has done similar things, by the way, so Joe Biden's not the only one. If we get a candidate in the Democratic Party who, uh, leading the Democratic Party, who believes that a, Demo a Republican like Mike Pence is okay, who believes that a Republican like Mike Pompeo is okay, who believes that they're just decent guys who think differently, even as they work to suppress black and brown voters, even as they work on their own forms of resistance to immigration for uh, people of color and Muslims, even as they promote the same kind of economic inequality. If we get that same kind of candidate again, they might or might not defeat Donald Trump. They're far less likely to defeat Donald Trump than someone who comes in and says, your life still isn't what it ought to be and I'm going to make it better. Uh, and let's say they do get elected with that kind of belief system, with that kind of sense that somehow even after 12 years of the Republican Party refusing all attempts to work with uh, even the most conservative Democrats, that somehow the future of the country should be bipartisan and we'll work with our friends across the aisle. This is exactly 
how the Democratic Party under Barack Obama took uh, the winning the presidency and both houses of Congress and turned it into losing first one, then the other House of Congress, and then the presidency between 2008 and 2016. This is exactly how the Democratic Party uh, went from control of many state houses and governorships to losing two-thirds of governorships, two-thirds of state houses, and more than a thousand legislative seats in state legislatures around the country uh, during an eight-year period. Now, they've been winning some of that back, won the House back. Uh, may have a, appear to have a shot at the presidency, uh, won some of those state seats back as well. Uh, are they going to build on those victories by standing for something that matters to the American people? Or are they going to give high-minded generalities, even as the next recession is probably bearing down on us like a train rumbling down the track because we are, in fact, due for a cyclical recession, even as in these supposed good times, people are seeing their wages stagnate, a burden of student debt that they can't uh, handle in many, many cases and other pressures on their own lives. Even when we have 2.2 uh, millions uh, incarcerated in a form of mass incarceration that discriminates against our black population. I could go on and on and on, but the Democrats are going to need more. A lot I found effective about this video, but the Democrats are going to need a lot more than this if they're going to become a majority party and, more importantly, if they are going to become the party of real change.